Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, I know a few more people will be joining, but so that we don't make our speaker wait for long, I believe we should get started. Uh, today we are launching a series of monthly Shabab Lab expert talks. And this has been in the making for some time now. So we've had this idea a few months back uh, and, and this is the first session. So we're really happy that this is seeing the light. And uh, what we will be doing is that every month we will be having an expert who will be talking about different uh, interesting um, topics, basically. Uh, so thank you for the note. Yes, the uh, drift says June 6. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, it's May 30 today. <laughs> so uh, sorry for that. Uh, basically, uh, today we'll be talking more about uh, really interesting topics such as uh, the metaverse, blockchain, crypto, uh, and other trendy technologies. And the whole idea is not just to, to learn what's going on, but also to see how we can actually make use of these technologies, um, not just to benefit, but also to, to make the world also a better place. So as you all know, when we talk about uh, Riada for Social Innovation or Shabab Lab, which are our like uh, the organizations uh, that we represent, uh, we always talk about uh, technology for good. We always talk about how to use uh, the tools we have around us in order to contribute to a better planet, to, to a better humanity, uh, to sustainability. And uh, I hope that today Jack will be actually touching upon those points and also explaining how like we can still do lots of good with, with the trending technology that sometimes might be intimidating or overwhelming, I would say. Um, I just want to tell you that in the chat, uh, basically uh, you have the room to tell us about um, any questions you have. Uh, or uh, also suggested topics for later uh, monthly talks. So we have, we do have like a proposed agenda from our side, but also uh, we would like to hear from you and see what you would be interested in. So basically um, this is again, is supposed to be a monthly expert talk um, sessions. Uh, they're especially designed for our alumni and students. However, uh, we, we will not like restrict it at least uh, for the first, um, a few months. Uh, then, of course, as numbers hopefully increase, we might uh, it might be a bit more restrictive. So uh, I will introduce now our speaker and give him the floor. Then he will tell you how he would uh, like you to interact. So each uh, person, you know, has different preferences. Uh, Jack is the CEO of many small businesses for digital media and business technology in the Middle East, Australia, and the United States. He helps digitally transform the operations of international clients from both private and public sectors, but without losing sight of what's human. Being a social entrepreneur, he efficiently helps people grow with and through the business as a technology and digital marketing strategist, a blockchain manager, and metaverse planner. He's also a trainer and consultant for building a successful career. Since the beginning of his career, he was involved in public affairs. Today, he is an active member of the UN Human Rights Office in Geneva, Switzerland, and professional fellow at the US Department of State. And he was recently a political candidate for the Lebanese parliament. Uh, we are really happy to have you uh, here with us, Jack. I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, you can, of course, start sharing yours and also uh, have some uh, rules if you would like to have some rules for this session. Thank you. Thank you, Mona, so much for the introduction. And I'm really happy. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, it's actually also uh, one of the most important uh, words that I always uh, love to hear is about the impact we do for humanity in whatever we do, either it's technology or business or an NGO or whatever we do. Uh, the center should be uh, human. Um, so I would love to know also, since we're not like, uh, it's, it's not really a big number, so we can take the chance to uh, quickly know in the chat uh, if you can introduce in three words um, yourself or up to five words you can, if you're doing uh, uh, many fields, you can say that uh, I'm a student, also entrepreneur. I mean, uh, you know, you can be an entrepreneur in any any day uh, of your life, any age. So uh, please feel free uh, in the chat to just say a couple of words about about yourself before we proceed 
and share my screen. Um, more people are joining. So just a couple of words. You can say that I'm an artist, I'm an entrepreneur, I whatever, uh, a volunteer, a singer, um, technology expert. Um, please just share whatever the words that describes you in the chat would be great. Uh, Mona, educator and entrepreneur. Uh, meanwhile, I'll be sharing my screen. Ibrahim from Asset School. Welcome, Ibrahim. How do you describe yourself? I'm Muhammad, computer engineer student at ASU. Temp Meanwhile, I'm going to share my screen. OK. Um, so meanwhile, please keep sharing your words. Baha, AMS student and an athlete. Ali Zain, ambitious, sympathizer and a good listener. Nice. It's a nice skill, by the way, to be a good listener. OK, please send your uh, words in the chat. Uh, meanwhile, I'll be talking a little bit about um, the metaverse introduction. Um, you know that the metaverse is now an ongoing process to be uh, the next as we hear the next internet. So we had web 1.0, web 2.0. 1.0 was just dealing with the internet as in uh, a way to present information. We don't interact with the information, we just read it. Web 2.0 was uh, the user was able to post on, on web 2.0 on, on the internet. Uh, same like with what we do with the CMS or the websites that we manage ourselves. And like social media, social media is the best example about 2.0. And then now we have 3.0 where there is no authority managing the internet. Uh, the, it, it is managing itself. The metaverse will be managing itself. Now we're going to go through the technical uh, part of the metaverse during the, the slides. Uh, it's an intensive slide. Somehow it's a session that has, you know, as you saw in the uh, registration uh, page. There is a lo lot of topics about metaverse. I wanted to make sure that you have all the knowledge that you need to, to move forward by your own and check more details, but these are the main topics about metaverse. Uh, Maya, makeup artist, nail artist, student at LMC and a musician. Uh, Nurhan, high school, green entrepreneur, pianist, Sabine, medical social work, student, humanitarian. Learnaholic, okay, good to know that. Um, Sabine, medical, okay, I've read that. So um, what is Metaverse? During, during the session, you can interact by sending in the chat. I would love to hear that, to read that mainly. Um, and if someone feels that you need to, um, you know, uh, ask a question by, you know, talking, uh, you can just raise your hand and, uh, and move forward ask your question or add any information. It is an interactive session, so please feel free to send your comments and send your knowledge, whatever you know about the metaverse uh, in the chat um, or your questions, definitely. Adnan, biomedical engineer, singer, excited. That's great. I love the soft part that you mentioned, uh, uh, guys. Uh, so it's always like not just our what, what we do in life, but how we do it or how do we feel. Uh, it's very important. Uh, this is the part that we mix the human part with uh, whatever we do, uh, especially with technology, because we, we are dealing with machines. Anyway, um, I'm going now uh, into the table of content. It was shared uh, in the registration page. So we are going through the metaverse, definition of the metaverse, uh, the concept, uh, how to benefit from the metaverse, because we know the definition. Most of us uh, are checking the, the definition on the web. Uh, we are some, sometimes excited to know more, so we go and read some articles, we watch some videos, uh, but it doesn't tell us exactly for us what is the benefit or what is maybe the, the negative impact sometimes. So the impact of the metaverse on our life also is mentioned in the, uh, during our session. We're going to go through also how blockchain technology is making business transactions easier and more, more secure. Why are we using it in business? How do you start using and taking advantage of blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFT? It is all the same word. 
how your industry or any industry will be affected by the metaverse top 10 career opportunities this is very important for you for many people are asking me what would be the next you know career titles that we can uh, get involved with and also some careers are you know um, disappearing from from the marketplace uh, so we really need to know that and whenever you have new career opportunities some career opportunities are disappearing and the future of metaverse where are we heading with the metaverse Meanwhile, please, if you have any question, even if you're, you know, going now into many details, you can even ask now so I can answer or tell you that this would be answered in the next slides. Um, again, I'm not going to go through the about speaker. Mona did uh, a great job uh, and mentioned everything. It was a quite a long definition. Uh, I tried to reduce it, but let me tell you a secret. You can, um, I, I love what you, many, many of you mentioned that you are, in many fields. I love mixing fields together and all for the sake of humanity. So whenever your impact of all these fields that you're working on uh, is, is having a great positive impact on humanity, then you, you're doing great. Uh, don't let anyone confuse you by saying that you just focus on one single thing. Yes, you can focus, but it's fine if you love other fields and you mix fields together. Um, what is the metaverse? How you can benefit from it? So the metaverse is actually, the terminology itself is to have the full universe in 3D as a virtual uh, world uh, that literally can interact with the users and objects. So you're creating another world. Now, many says that, um, say that the websites currently are already a virtual world. While not, it's, it's not an interactive world, you're not, living into uh, in, in that world, you're not getting into that world. And this is the, the misconception that many people are saying that this is the end of the world and the, the current world is not gonna uh, last with the new technologies, uh, but this is not correct. Whenever you go and log into a website, you are using that website to do something, to make a transaction, to play a game maybe, to sell something, to buy something. And this is the same purpose of the metaverse, but in, in a more realistic way, um, in a more, uh, you know, connected, you're more connected to what, to, to, the, to the platforms that, that you're trying to, I'm sure that many of you who are engaged in video games, you understand better than people who didn't try video games, especially uh, the interactive games where you are really inside the game, um, even if it's a PlayStation or the, um, it, it's a console or your laptop or your mobile phone. Uh, there are some games that you feel that you know, you're really attached to that game. You're fully integrated in the game. The more if you have the, you know, Oculus, for example, or any VR uh, set that you're using to get into that game, like literally get inside the game with a sound effect and, uh, um, and you know, whatever you, you see inside in a virtual reality, virtual space makes you feel that you are inside that world. So this is, uh, it's a combination of all of these, um, you know, terminologies, it is online, it is 3D, it is virtual. And now to make it more um, real or make it more uh, interactive, we use some uh, um, uh, technologies that makes it, um, that makes it more um, uh, transparent and not that somehow is managing that website. For now, your Facebook page can be lost in seconds if someone in Facebook decides to block like all the pages. In the metaverse, since we are using the blockchain, now we're gonna see what the blockchain is. Uh, it's, it is managing your data. Uh, how it is managing your data? Uh, the blockchain is actually a set of blocks that is interconnected somehow, and that uh, has a specific digital, um, what can we call it, like in uh, a set of, uh, information that proves this block is uh, holds some information for your account or for your digital wallet. So on Facebook, you have an, uh, an account or on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever website you're using. On the metaverse, you have a, a, in the blockchain, you have a digital wallet. I'm sure that many of you heard about the cryptocurrency and that you use a digital wallet to buy and sell and trade with cryptocurrencies. This digital wallet is also your ID in the metaverse. 
now the, the opportunities are limitless and we are still building the metaverse. It's not there yet uh, in total. You cannot just go and do anything in the metaverse today. Um, but anyway, we're gonna see with the slides, what are the, the current use of, of the metaverse? So it is, the definition is the whole digital world in an augmented reality where you can really see yourself, your twin or your virtual copy inside the metaverse. So you have your avatar inside the metaverse uh, who can do things for you as an AI, artificial intelligence. Sometimes you can do things when, when you're sleeping. Uh, I don't know, uh, replying to, to messages or buying some stuff on uh, automated mode somehow. You can create your own rules and you can, it's, it's like a gamifying life. So you're going into a game where you can do everything from education, maybe uh, development, learning, um, uh, shopping, uh, gaming, whatever, whatever you need to do in the metaverse, you can do it like, um, like you're there. Even if you're not there, if you're not holding your Oculus and playing or buying or whatever, there is an avatar where in the future can be automated and doing things for you. And we wish that we have this now because the digital stuff can be done by artificial intelligence, but it's not smart enough yet to do that. Please, meanwhile, if you have any confusion, because in the beginning, the definitions might be a bit, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, extensive maybe, or um, not clear, please feel free to send your questions. Or if you have anything to add, I might forget many things about metaverse. It's a, it's a quite uh, a very wide word. Uh, multiple interconnected sites. So it's multiple uh, sites, like not necessarily a website, it can be a land, a virtual land. I'm sure you've heard that many uh, brands are buying, like with millions of dollars, I, are buying virtual lands in the metaverse. Um, uh, real time, persistence, so all, all these are keywords and self-sustaining, it's most, most important. Um, and what is the meaning of interoperability? Uh, it's operations are mixed between the multiple metaverse. So now if you have, for example, a Twitter account, he, he, this Twitter account means nothing for Instagram. You know, it's, uh, it's split somehow, the websites are split. And the metaverse, um, the way it is built and it is connected with the, with the same blockchain, uh, it is somehow interconnected. So if you buy a land in, in Decentraland, for example, um, um, so you can see yourself in another land maybe. If you buy an, an apartment somewhere, uh, if you go to another website or another site, you can see uh, the certificate of, of that land. The metaverse would understand that you are the same person who is buying that land or buying any um, um, digital asset in the metaverse. I'm sure also you've heard about NFT. We are going to tackle the NFTs and the digital certificate uh, later on. So the impact of metaverse in our life. Definitely, we, we just said that we are entering or we are stepping into the metaverse as a, another virtual life where we can do everything. And by everything, I don't mean if you wanna eat, you eat in the metaverse. So this is actually the misconception that many people are bringing because they cannot really understand yet what the metaverse is. So we can hear like a lot of questions. We are replacing life. We are uh, you know, ending our real life. We don't like our life, so we're creating another life. No, it's not. It's actually a two way that it's, it's up to you. Now you can use the websites to just forget about your life or use gaming. Now you can use your PlayStation or Xbox to, or your mobile to forget about your life, your school, your parents, and just stuck into the mobile. It's, it's up to you. But the metaverse is an, an, a more advanced tool where you can go through and do you know, shopping, trading, business, games, whatever it is, but it is more into um, closer to the reality. Um, it make it gives you more sense of dealing with um, what you really need to do uh, and get closer. So if you're buying a product, for example, you can see the product as an augmented reality in front of you or virtual reality. Uh, we're not yet um, there yet with the augmented reality. Uh, many companies are building the augmented reality. Augmented reality means that you can see your surrounding at the same time you can see the objects from inside the uh, your your headset. So imagine you're driving a car at the same time if you wear those glasses, you can see um, your speed, 
in front of you, you can see sometimes virtual, maybe you can decide to see animals walking, uh, uh, you know, um, next to your car. Um, um, Mona, I'm not sure if um, this is a question for me, but I would love to, or if you, if you can share other AR examples uh, for the audience. Okay. Um, so yeah, they are example beside that um, sometimes imagine you're playing a game, but that game, you can play it in your neighborhood. So you're going in the, in the street, of course, a safe street or, or a playground. Imagine you go to a um, soccer or football playground, and then you're playing a game with many players in, instead of having 10 real players. So yeah, definitely it would be amazing if we can get 10 real players. Uh, but if your friends are outside the country uh, and you want to play in like real time, but at the same time, it's virtual. So that is augmented reality. I hope this is a clear example. There are many other examples. Um, if you want to go to a store and you want to see the, um, the products in that store, you can either go virtually. Virtually means you put the headset, it closed like Oculus, um, like similar to the, to the virtual uh, headset that this um, uh, graphic shows. It's closed. You cannot see what's behind the, the headset. But in augmented reality, it's like in uh, sunglasses. You can see what's behind the glasses. So you can see your environment, your surrounding environment. But at the same time, you can see virtual objects. So it's a mixed reality. Um, so this is it. You can play games. You can uh, do shopping in augmented reality. It is dangerous if you, uh, if you take the examples that I just mentioned. But the street, you know, if you go to the streets and play that game, uh, if uh, if the game is not really uh, you know properly set to be augmented reality, some people add many objects and you get confused and maybe I don't know uh, get crashed or have an accident or whatever. Uh, it should be really it's a big responsibility. But virtual reality, you're staying at home, just you know moving around. You have the joystick that you can move forward and backward. Uh, Adrian, can you please repeat what does the blockchain mean and do? Yes, we're gonna have it right now after this um, slide. I would like to know more about the psychological effects of metaverse. Also, this is the next uh, part. Um, so yeah, um, first before I, I'd love to mention uh, more about the blockchain. The blockchain is actually the technology that is connecting all of what I just mentioned. Why? Because currently we do uh, store data and information in the websites for the websites we store it in a database or you know a set of codes that we created somehow created a code that computers can understand that code and maybe show you a picture or a video or when you comment on facebook or twitter or instagram or whatever you post a story there is an algorithm working on that but this is all managed by a company managed by people setting those rules and they can block you or whatever you do. They are manually ma managing your data. They are manually managing your um, you know, behavior on social media. But blockchain is actually a technology that is that automatically connects all the blocks. You know, it's like a set of blocks, a cubes. Imagine it like you have cubes where you can, uh, every cube stores information. And those information are interconnected together with other blocks. So imagine if you have a wallet and you have 10 Bitcoins in that, you would be rich, definitely. I hope everyone had this in this room um, or someday, but this 10 Bitcoins are stored in a block where, for example, um, Adnan has or owns these 10 uh, Bitcoins. And then um, Adnan doesn't need um, the bank to... Uh, a claim or to prove that Adnan owns this 10 Bitcoins. It's the blockchain that shows that Adnan owns and has a certificate about uh, uh, that proves that those 10 Bitcoins belongs to Adnan. And this one block in the blockchain, why this is called blockchain? Because it's a chain of blocks. It's a set of blocks. And this blockchain, it's, it's a technology, okay? It's not like a real block. It's in coding and money servers around the world. The importance, the main, very important part of the blockchain that it secure itself. So if the blockchain is the block is corrupted or someone try to hack this block, the other block can fix this block because the blockchain stores all the information 
all the information is stored in all the blocks. So if one of the blocks is corrupted, the other block can fix it and so on. So it's kind of, you know, I'm explaining in an, in an easy way, this technology, of course, it's a lot of code. It's a, it requires a lot of servers, but it is not you. It's not your job to understand uh, if you're not a developer, how it is coded. I mean, you don't need to understand, understand IP addresses or routers. How do routers work to use internet? You just go and use the internet. You don't know how Facebook is coded to use Facebook. So it's the same concept. It's the technology is there, but it's, it's that smart and doesn't need an authority. Why? Because those blocks are actually containing all the rules where can can tell you that this asset, this crypto or this NFT, we're going to talk about NFT later on in the next slide. Uh, it's actually uh, proving that Adnan owns these 10 Bitcoins or Muhammad has this digital asset, NFT or a picture or owns this uh, apartment, for example. Now, how can we, how can we uh, know how to use the, the blockchain? It will be actually a platform that you go, a website, a web 3.0 website that uh, can manage itself, that the backend is not uh, managed by an authority. You remember that, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the, uh, the, the documentaries that were talking about Facebook conspiracy in the uh, political statements or political campaigns in the States and UK. Um, actually, Facebook had the, the access or Mark Zuckerberg had the authority to maybe sell this information or to manage the ads inside Facebook to lead the political uh, vision of people to vote, for example, for um, the next president or the Brexit in the UK. Uh, these were all like authorities um, um, that were managing the data to move a specific maybe political statement. So this was a, a bad use of uh, privacy and of um, um, information. While in blockchain, even Meta, now Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, is the, if, if he decides to, uh, to, uh, to sell the information through ads or whatever, he, he, doesn't, he cannot do that because blockchain is storing those information privately. There is full privacy for the user. At the same time, it is managing itself. So the set of rules in the blockchain is actually managing those information. So it's your digital wallet, your information, your Bitcoin, and you're directly dealing with your peer-to-peer. -peer. So this is another terminology that you hear in Metaverse. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. Whenever I want to send you Bitcoin, I send it directly to you. It doesn't go to a bank. It doesn't go to any authority. It doesn't go to any company. It's directly I'm sending it to you. So you can hold your Bitcoins inside a USB, and then it's like a set of codes that can, whenever you need to make a transaction, the blockchain takes that responsibility and makes it make a secure transaction and makes all the uh, required operations to send that transaction from your USB directly to another uh, wallet. I'm sure that you'll have a lot of questions about that. So please feel free to ask whatever, it quest whatever question you have. Even if you feel it's a very basic question, please ask. It's very important because the blockchain and the metaverse is not something that is now ready. It's the future. It's like suddenly uh, you can see like every, everything is shifting to metaverse a few years uh, uh, ahead. It's similar when the website started in the beginning in 90s, uh, some people were using websites while all other people were saying, well, this is just a bubble and it will end up and we cannot understand it, so let's not use it. Even when, when uh, social media, uh, also use of social media started at the same time. We also had this, uh, you know, I remember that I, I started uh, uh, one of my businesses in 2010 and it was about social media for business and uh, digital marketing and websites. So many, many businesses were saying that just, this is just a bubble, social media is going to end very soon. And now look where we are. I mean, social media is a very big step toward the metaverse. Uh, it, it was a big step and it shifted the whole, you know, economy, social life. Um, and I mean, with, with a little bit more responsibility and understanding, we could make uh, social media a really like positive change in the world. And now we can do that with the, with the metaverse as well. Um, so this is it. So blockchain is a technology that doesn't need an authority. It can manage itself. 
uh, doesn't need a company to manage the it's we are managing information like whenever i upload my information whatever i use the blockchain i'm actually allowing the blockchain to manage and store my uh, information my bitcoin my nfts my apartment whatever i have as digital asset my music files drawings um i'm allowing a uh, blockchain to store it securely uh, anonymously and only my digital wallet can prove that this is my uh my certificate and i don't need an authority or the government or whatever to prove that um so what are some some impact on our on our life uh you will have a digital twin so as i said you will have a kind of avatar a robot inside the metaverse that is doing stuff for you um express ourselves better in the metaverse and we've seen it in many ways of course the direct connection is amazing do the mix um but sometimes what do you do if you have someone you know from a long distance and you need to do business or meet or gather or whatever you want to do with that metaverse can be a great solution for that um i've seen a video and concept video between kg students talking like they like they are in their classrooms but at the same time they are interacting with uh, other kg classes in other countries with different languages they were just you know um talking in their own language and then the other side um it's another language is translated so we're breaking uh you know boundaries we we're building more bridges so this is the human part in the metaverse and we need to focus on it like similarly you can be um someone who um with a human focused human centered mindset you're dealing and you're uh, uh building the metaverse and doing whatever you want to do either an initiative a social entrepreneurship uh a uh, start social startup whatever you want to build if it's human centered that then it is for good if it's not if it's just to make money or to build an empire then you would do anything maybe uh uh to to just you know even if it's um if it's not not a good thing for for humanity then you can still do it so it's up to you it's a decision um also a uh, playful experience it's gamifying actually what we do in life we have some boring stuff in life right as so we have some old maybe uh, education platforms that you can tra transform uh, we have the shopping experience that is now online whenever we don't have the time to go to go shopping or we want to shop something from another country we don't want to uh, you know uh, pay uh, or have expensive uh, arrangements to travel and buy something or whatever so it can be always solving a uh, a problem um so and the difference between the reality and the metaverse this is not always a good impact some negative impact that we really need to work on that we we really need to raise awareness and we have a responsibility as social entrepreneurs to do that and also impact on mental health now also working all the day all day long on the on the web uh, has an impact on our mental health as a replacement what i do uh, as an um as in uh, a business uh, leader or team leader or team player whatever i don't want to i don't like to act as a as a manager or as a boss what i do is to get closer with my team to see what they are facing during the day i shifted to uh, online work because of the issues i have in my country in lebanon um to make the team comfortable so that was a uh, a solution for the mental health uh, uh burden that my team was having with the remote work at home and at the same time what we what what i try to do is to get a mental health coach coach to uh to actually deal with our problems as a team uh, either it's a personal problem or workplace problem or team teamwork uh, uh team building um you know activities that the mental health can do mental health coach can do so you have many steps that you can do to make this balance at the same time you're solving problems yes but with some solutions comes other problems that you need to solve and so on um how blockchain technology is making business transactions easier and more secure you know the main problem between businesses is building trust so if if you need to buy a product or a service from a business the the main factor that leads you to buy that service or product is trust you need to trust that business before you pay your money to get that service or product so blockchain comes in the middle and 
um, create that relationship between businesses. Why? Because there's something called smart contracts, which is the when you buy a Bitcoin, you are actually creating a smart contract or you're buying an NFT, buying an image or a music file. NFT can be any digital asset. It's a non-fungible token that we're going to talk about later on. But now it's important to mention that, that the blockchain is managing this uh, communication between parties, between people, between organizations, uh, between me and any other business or organization. How? So if you have this smart contract, you are asking blockchain to give you the authority on your or uh, the um, um, when you when you have the um, secure uh, license, for example, that proves that this entity, this music file, this image, this apartment, whatever you are having on the uh, blockchain belongs to you. And no one can steal that and no one can copy it and no one can just, you know, um, um, go to the, the, the authority, to the government and try to make an, a trick to take to take the uh, this ownership. So you have a proof of ownership blockchain can have within this blockchain. Now, uh, you can see the blockchain in the background. It's just an hypothetical, you know, drawing that shows you that every block is connected to another block within with an inter interconnection. Um, so how is it making uh, more secure? Um, so this line between the two blocks is called hash. Okay, so this is the first box security by the blocks hash encryption. So we have hash encryptions between the blocks. Why is it secure? As I said before, every block protects the next block. So all your information is stored in that block while all the blocks so you need to shut down all the servers in the world in order to remove the ownership or ignore the ownership that you have on a digital asset or nft or uh, cryptocurrency so no one can even hackers cannot just hack the website or hack the platform hack the metaverse or the blockchain and take the ownership uh, from you the combination of the three leading technologies which is cryptographic keys which is the set of codes that build that blockchain, build that block of information, if, if I can say. A peer-to-peer -peer network containing a shared ledger. So this peer-to-peer, -peer, I'm proving that uh, the blockchain can prove that the connection between or the contract between me and Brahim, for example, is actually uh, showing that uh, our contract, maybe a uh, job contract can be, and uh, maybe Brahim is selling me his car, his real car, and I'm paying it with paying him with uh, Bitcoin. And at the same time, I'm getting a digital certificate for that car. So whenever someone needs to prove that that car is for me, you can just go to that platform. And no one can say that this is fake. No one can say that this is um, that this is uh, not legal because it's there and it's actually the machine, the blockchain is is giving me this proof. And you can go by time and uh, use this as a trust um, for the maybe reviews that you get as someone who's buying from a business. Or if I buy a car from Brahim, I can see where Brahim actually got this car and how did he get it and why he's selling it, selling it. Because all this information would be on a trustful platform that no one can manipulate and no one has authority on this platform to do. Um, so, Leah, I hope you I answered your question about the psychological effect in the metaverse. Of course, the same effect and more effect, actually, uh, that we need to take care of. I cannot say that the effect is less than using websites. It's same like when you go to the to the games and get stuck in the games. I don't I wouldn't recommend uh, the metaverse and the virtual world for kids less than 12 years old um, um, until we create something safer. I don't know. Uh, Nurhan, so every block has the same info as the other. It's actually, the, all, all the information is stored in, in all the blocks. Of course, the more information we add, the more this chain get bigger, gets bigger. But um, it's actually like uh, the hash is some leading information in every block that is connected. It's somehow, it's not like all the information is stored in one block, but it's, uh, you know, in math, you have some um, some set of, formulas that if you if you want to solve if one of, of the blocks is missing 
the other blocks can assume and can calculate what the information in this block can be and just fix it. So it's like an, um, an interconnected set of information that can actually know and guess, not guess, but make sure that this information in this block is equal uh, one, two, three, or whatever the information is. Okay, so this is it. Um, of course, this is with, with like um, from real life examples. Um, there is a, a specific code that you know is required to develop the blockchain to create a blockchain and the blockchain is actually a technology so you have ethereum blockchain you might have uh now you have other other uh kind of blockchains uh, uh cardano has a blockchain so every cryptocurrency now you can see they can have their own blockchain because actually cryptocurrency is a set of um a set of blocks that that build a blockchain but we can use it for cryptocurrencies to you know for financial um transactions we can also use it for nfts which are other digital assets uh digit, by nfts i mean like non-fungible to tokens um imagine you're a music file that you have and create you create a music for yourself you're a music producer i'm sure that some of you mentioned that uh, you are a musician imagine you're creating a song or a music and then suddenly i copy it i remove all the copyrights and then resell it as it's mine no one can prove that this is your uh, music file but the blockchain can do that because if you build that music file and upload it to the blockchain and don't distribute it on other websites just distribute it through blockchain technologies blockchain website with web 3.0 websites so there are web 3.0 websites you can go log in to websites that currently you cannot still log in with the current browsers like chrome um, and uh, edge and uh, mozilla uh, firefox uh, some of them have extensions and you can change something in the browser to browse the new uh, web 3.0 websites but in the future it will be all accessible um, you know that some you know wallets on your mobile can browse these kind of websites you can just create a wallet actually my advice to you after the session is to go to and download uh, any uh, wallet, digital wallet application and create your, your own wallet. There is uh, MetaMask, I guess. Um, I, can, I can actually uh, share with you the name. Uh, there is uh, Coin Wallet. There are some, when you search, you can see what, while mo most used applications, you can, you can use it. Um, Adnan Pi, there are a lot of, like a lot of uh, uh, wallets that you can create. At the end, if the wallet can accept a specific, um, you know, blockchain or uh, cryptocurrency, uh, then you can you can deal with any other uh, any other wallet. Uh, otherwise, you can have many wallets. Uh, the mining, uh, the different types of blockchain is actually yes, it's not one blockchain as I mentioned. It's a, the blockchain is technology. So social network is in kind of platform, but you have many social networks. So it's similar um, to blockchain. Mining actually is when you've heard about mining and cryptocurrency. Uh, in cryptocurrencies, you can, um, you know, uh, bring some uh, devices, mining, mining uh, 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 devices. Sometimes it's like a router, sometimes it's like a server. So these mining um, devices can mine, can actually bring you cryptocurrencies. What is actually mining? is solving, um, solving, like if you go to blockchain, you can still go and mine for uh, Bitcoin, for example. So if you mine for Bitcoin, you are creating um, currencies for you, You're creating money, actually. Uh, how possible is it? Like if you go and mine for uh, gold, you know, some people go to specific countries, go to mining fields and, and try to mine for gold and you go and sell this gold. It's similar concept, but in the digital world, it's like you're solving formulas. These devices, these servers are um, uh, solving some formulas in the blockchain to create, to get this Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for you and add it to your wallet. Um, of course, it's a very big topic. Uh, there is a lot of details. There is a lot of factors to create, to mine. You can read about it. It's, it needs like a, not one session. It needs a lot of um you know uh sessions maybe to know how to mine and to learn where is the best because you know if everyone knows about the best 
mining solution, best cryptocurrency, then everyone would be would be doing that. So we need to learn and learn and take the risks sometimes to do mining with a specific um, uh, device to to create money to create cryptocurrencies. It's a cool field, but at the same time, um, you know, you need to really get deeper. And uh, guess what? Yeah, you don't need any like certificate or to be at this specific, you know, level of education or age to do that. You can just learn a little bit about it, try it. I would take the risk to try it, to spend maybe $10, $50 to just buy cryptocurrency, create a wallet just for education. Forget about this. You Maybe this amount can, be, uh, can bring you more uh, if you buy, for example, now a very uh, Ethereum, for example, which is a very uh, promising uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Then when you move forward, you can see that this, the value of this uh, cryptocurrencies are actually getting um, higher. So how do you start using and taking advantage of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and NFTs? I hope that so far, and you can answer in the chat, uh, you are familiar with these terminologies. So the metaverse is the whole thing. It's the word of all these um, you know, uh, elements. Uh, blockchain is the technologies that, that is holding all this together. It's the backbone of the metaverse. It is actually metaverse without uh, blockchain is actually another copy of a virtual game that we already have. So how do you know that Jack is actually talking to you in the metaverse? If we have two versions, let's say Jack and Mona are talking uh, in the metaverse and trying to make a deal or giving a lecture or whatever, how do we know that these are actually uh, the real persons behind this avatar is actually blockchain? Because there is one Jack in the blockchain because of my um, uh, wallet because of the information that I have, because the cryptocurrency that I hold, my money, my so now if you need to have a proof of uh, um, ownership, you go to a bank, right? So similarly, now you go to blockchain because it has all your information. You cannot lie to the blockchain. They have their uh, virtual bank account, which is not the bank account, but they have the, uh, uh, you know, the blockchain can know that this is Jack, but that doesn't give you the information. This is the difference. While in the bank, I can go and ask about uh, maybe um, uh, Maya's in, 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 in the bank. And then, yes, there is some security in the bank, uh, but no one knows what that human behind my account can do, right? Um, in, in some countries, there is no um, uh, privacy and security as well. So anyone can know and can go and know how much how much uh, money I know. So the blockchain blockchain is actually the security um, guard for my information. While you can trust blockchain to tell you about me without giving you the information. So you can trust blockchain just because they it has all my information and it has all my either negative or positive um, you know behaviors in the metaverse. But at the same time, um, it gives you that. Uh, 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 result or that response or that reply if you're asking whether you need to make a transaction you need to send me money uh, if I'm if I'm, I'm making any fraud on the blockchain then the blockchain would block me uh, cryptocurrency I'm sure that you're um, you know used to that Bitcoin Ethereum Cardano uh, NFTs non-fungible tokens are the digital assets again Many people are still asking why NFTs are very expensive. Why are we buy, buying a JPEG image for $10? Please ask me these questions. It's fine. If you still don't get you know, the idea why someone would buy a JPEG image. From what I see in the future on, of NFTs, it's actually a ticket access to a community, ticket access to an event. It, it's not necessarily just you're buying that JPEG. It's not necessarily that you're buying that artwork. Yes, it can be an artwork. You can be an artist and you can draw a, a great you know, um, image and sell it on, on the blockchain. And then when you sell it on the blockchain and the metaverse, you're securing that um, you know, NFT, that digital asset, if you're a musician. Um, for my, uh, you know, one of the, the jobs that I do is actually uh, helping communities and uh, small businesses to use blockchain to, um, to make to improve their business. So one of the one of the um, you know uh, followers connections on LinkedIn contacted me to know what they can do with their uh, music album. 
another one uh, contacted me to know what they can uh, do with their, you know, um, old uh, theater, for example, or a uh, gallery of art. So uh, we managed to do an idea where all the artists can can have their can have their um, you know um, uh, artwork converted to a non fungible token, an NFT, and then they can sell it online and make money with that. So yes, that would be a, a life changing for many many artists because they don't know about about NFTs, and then at the same time they can make sure that their uh, artwork are being sold in a safe way, and then it's it's a proof of ownership uh, in the metaverse that this artwork is for them. And manage it like uh, Mona Lisa. Okay, there's one Mona Lisa in the world, and it cannot be copied. The real Mona Lisa. Yes, you can copy and sell the the fake uh, and copy. Uh, you can sell the copy uh, version of it, but the main one, the main value is in the main uh, one. So this is your NFT, your first NFT. Any questions about NFT? I know that there's a lot of questions usually. Uh, I have uh, a question. Yeah, sure. So they sometimes give the analogy with Pokemon cards, for example, but also in Pokemon cards, it's not as unique as the Mona Lisa. So, you know, multiple people can have multiple uh, or the same, like, authentic Pokemon cards. Like, uh, is there anything similar in the NFT world? Yes, actually, more than that, if you go back in time, uh, and still now, some people, you know, uh, love to buy the cards, the uh, player cards the, for, for, for a game like football or, uh, um, you know, whatever, uh, soccer um player games or cars sometimes some people just buy that card and it's like one unique card that whenever you buy it you feel that okay i have all the collection so it's one of the uses also um for those um you can also copy that i mean many people ask um that yeah okay i can take a screenshot of that nft and you know sell it uh, yes you can do that but this is not the original uh file and it is not connected to the blockchain, the most important thing. So if, if I'm, uh, uh, I'm giving you the, uh, you know, the permission to access an event. So imagine now this uh, session, um, instead of going and registering on Zoom and buy NFT, if it's maybe for free or paid, uh, if it's a paid session, I can sell you an NFT so that, that gives you access to this session and another session later on. It would be like a ticket for that. So it's not, and, and you can prove that this ticket is your ticket and you can get benefit later on. You can get a discount maybe because you hold this and it's not like you get it from another person or you just sew it somewhere, um, you know, um, it's, it's like you, like you paid for that uh, ticket. And later on businesses can use this to make like loyalty programs more, um, um, you know, uh, realistic and more sustainable uh loyalty programs with with nfts that there's a lot of opportunities actually in every session i try to bring new examples because it's 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 limitless uh can't i change the screenshot again to nft <coughs> then we have two of the same item uh norhan do you mean to so to take a screenshot if, for the NFT? Yeah, if you create a copy of, uh, you know, a digital asset, can you uh, recreate a new NFT with it? Or is there a way to, det to detect that this is not the authentic one and then you cannot uh, sell it yourself? Okay, so this is it. Now, when you copy, then if I want to know which is the original copy that I need to buy ownership and no one can use it, um, is actually... Um, having that ownership inside the blockchain. So if you take a screenshot and go register that in the blockchain, either the platform that you're using, imagine that blockchain is a platform at the end, there's a website that you, you know, go inside and do your transaction. Now, if you do that, if the, if, the, if the platform has those rules and most of the platforms would do that, they cannot accept you uploading that in the, in the, in the website. So the blockchain can manage it through those rules. Now, if you copy that item, and I'm, I'm the owner and I don't want to um, uh, let anyone else to copy my, my uh, artwork or whatever it is, a music file. Now, similarly, what, what, is having, what is happening now on YouTube, whenever you upload a song, 
Now YouTube can detect that this is this is a similar music and give you, and block the uh, remove the video from YouTube because it's it's similar. Now this takes a lot of you know technology and rules and human uh, resources to do that. Um, in the blockchain and blockchain, no, it can prove that this the, the main owner, so that you cannot upload that um, that screenshot. So it's actually a proof of ownership. Now, definitely the technology itself, you can create your own blockchain, by the way, and accept anyone putting copies or whatever, but this is not a trustful. Similar like another website now, you go and see everyone just adding any, if you go to YouTube and see many videos and one is fake, one is low quality, one whatever, you just feel like it's, an, it's a mess in this website. Um, so the website itself or the authority behind this website try to uh, solve this problem by doing like adding some rules and having the human interaction in blockchain it's different because it is managing itself by those rules and by the blocks of um of the information that we mentioned um i hope i'm answering the questions and it's not like really um it's really clear when i'm having those examples uh you have to know that um some examples uh, didn't happen yet some examples that I'm giving you, I'm assuming that the metaverse logically can do that, but no one maybe did it yet because it needs a lot of work. It needs to build actually a big um, platform that contains everything, that contains all the aspects of our lives. That this is not, it's not there yet. And the most, uh, the closer to that is actually Facebook because they hold 3 billion, uh, uh, you know, users. Um, so yeah. Uh, now, before going to um, affecting the industries, so I talked already about NFTs can really be anything digital. Um, and, uh, you know, I try to mention everything uh, that we have in other slides uh, within the examples, so we don't uh, uh, get more, um, waste more time on, on the examples. Um, a lot of the marketplaces accept Ethereum, NFTs are stored in digital wallets. We talked already about this. Uh, let me skip to the how will industries be affected. So, so I also give, gave some examples about this, but you can imagine the financial services uh, that is a lot of has a lot of opportunities, uh, virtual to physical redemptions. So if you have uh, the examples that I gave you to the car, if I sell a car, I can sell an NFT about that car. So it will be like a certificate for you to prove that this is your car now. It's not my car anymore. Digital ownership, like the MP3 files or uh, songs or artwork, the production, the virtual production that you can do inside the metaverse. So imagine building a car in the metaverse before you build it in the real world. This will help a lot, uh, you know, of um, companies in the production uh, industry. Education is actually number one, uh, you know, uh, chance that can uh, the metaverse provide to to uh, to humanity which is you know learning by imagine like you're going into now instead of having this presentation you can see me like if everyone had the headset i would do that i have some classes that i do in the metaverse with my uh, oculus then you can you know you can see me going into the board uh, bringing some material in front of me. If I'm talking about the car, I can bring a car in front of me and I explain it to you. If I'm talking about history, I can go back in time and show you what the World War I was, where, where was happening, uh, all the, what, you know, how was all the war happening between the countries and show you like in real, in real time and it would be a big impact to you. Muriel, when we reach the stage of uploading an NFT, are there specific criteria before being downloaded on the virtual market? Uh, no, actually, there is many steps uh, that you need to do uh, uh, to get into it. It's a big process, not a big process, but many steps. Uh, but you need to wait sometimes. You need to do um, to create those uh, uh, files first and then try to upload it on, on, uh, on a platform. Um, then uh, to download it into the virtual market, once it's there, you can use those NFTs in a game or whatever if that game accepts that platform. So again, it's not there yet. We're not uh, at that uh, stage uh, of having all the metaverse connected together. We still have some sandbox and some websites, but yes, the process, you have a specific process to, to do um, in order to, uh, to upload your NFTs. Um, I can, I'll be happy to, to have another 
another session about that. It's uh, it needs like in maybe 30 to 45 minutes to go through the process so you can learn about it. Also, you can read some articles about it. Most of the platforms provide you with the documentation and uh, real steps about it. Um, so yeah, you can uh, with education, you can provide more high quality materials uh, and also you can reach more audience. Top 10 career, which is the last uh, point that I would love to mention. It's a great opportunity for you to know what are the career that I, I just selected like top 10. There's a lot. Um, the metaverse research, research scientist, you can do a lot of research because as I said, there's a lot of opportunities. There, there is a lot to do in the metaverse now to reach that, you know, the real metaverse that you can use. Uh, blockchain engineer, you can be an engineer, you can develop blockchain, it's normal, like a usual code uh, that you can learn and just do coding. NFT strategist, you can be a strategist to, uh, to plan and manage NFTs. So someone would like to create an album of artists, uh, maybe, or um, MP3 sound files or whatever. Uh, you can you can be that strategist to build that NFT. It's not just create any image and upload it like you you know read sometimes about some articles metaverse planner um so you are planning a specific community for a specific community i usually try 